so we're going to get started with exercise 209. Um, and to me, this is one of the more fun exercises to do. Um, we're going to model non-orthogonal shapes, so things like pillows and that sort of thing. Um, it's, it's meant to be kind of fun. I'm going to show you a variety of strategies for how do you make cloth-like objects. Uh, one of the big things about doing this sort of modeling is you need to kind of naturally understand how stuff looks. Like if there's a set of curtains, what do the curtains look like? You know, if you look into my office over there, uh, you can see the pleats of the curtains and kind of what the folds look like. You kind of have to observe that sort of thing to be able to model it and have it look right. Um, a lot of times things are too precise. They look too perfect. And in the real world, folds don't happen perfectly even, or pillows aren't perfectly you know, shaped. Uh, so I'm going to talk you through today a variety of strategies for creating um, pillow-like objects. And we're going to start with uh, kind of the most simple version. And I'm going to kind of walk through how I would go about creating it. Uh, and we're going to learn some, some new commands that you've never done before. Um, the, the hope is that they will not work directly above my head so that we have to listen to this. Um, we will see, OK? So um, if we're going to create uh, a cushion or a cushion-like object, we could start with, say, a box. And we could draw that box. Uh, let's say let's start at 0, 0, at 24, uh, 24, and have a height of maybe 4 inches or something like that. And that would look like you know, a cushion on its most basic level. Okay. We could then further enhance it by maybe doing a fillet uh, of the surface with maybe a radius of a half inch. And we could go around and we could try to you know, basically round over the edges or something. Okay. It's still going to look very, very square. It's not an organic object. It's very precise and flat. So we want to do a different strategy for how we would create it. So instead, we're going to start with a series of curves, and we're going to use something called a curve network to build the surface. So let's start with a very basic set of curves. I'll start with just a polyline tool. I'll start at 0, 0 again. And let me turn on ortho. And I'm going to do that same two foot square. So we'll do two feet there, we'll do two feet here, and we'll come back to the start there. I'm also going to take this object and instead of having it be a rectangle, I want individual line segments. So I'll go ahead and type explode, which is then going to create separate line segments for everything that I'm doing. I'm going to turn off gumball as well. Okay. So right now, if I were to turn on uh, what are called control points right here, I would end up with a control point at each end. Okay. Well, that's fine, but in reality, I want a little bit more control over this particular object. So let's take this line, and I want to rebuild this line so that it has maybe five control points on it. So I'm going to type rebuild. I think it's under the edit command, too. And that brings up this little rebuild dialog box. And so by its nature, we see that it has two control points right now. That's the number in parentheses. And then this is how many control points do I want to add. Okay, So for example, I could say I want five control points total. Uh, the curvature degree is three. That's fine. I could go ahead and say OK. And now if I turn my control points on, we'd see that I have a point in the center. I have a point here. I have a point there. So I end up with five total points across this line instead of just two. Okay, Let's back up and let's rebuild it with a few more points. Let me go to um, Edit, Rebuild, or I could type Rebuild. And instead of five, maybe we'll do seven. A few more points. I'll go ahead and say OK. And now if I were to turn the points on, there we go. We have a lot more points to work from. Okay. I'm going to do the same rebuild on each of the other tools, or each of the other sides. So let me go to Rebuild, seven. Let me take this one, Rebuild. 7, this one, and we'll rebuild by 7. Okay, Now that I have all four curves rebuilt, let's take all of the curves and again show the, the points. So it is this button over here 
but you could also type points on, and that would, uh, that would show the points. OK, so if we're looking at this object, we now see that I have a bunch of control points that, that define this object. It's time to start adjusting these control points a bit. So let me look at it instead of in the perspective view, in the top view. Okay. So part one, I want the corners to be rounded. So let's go ahead and take the corner. Notice that instead of clicking on the point, I've dragged a box over the point so that I select both corner points. And then I'm just going to pull this corner point back in. Oh, let me turn off ortho here. I'm going to pull those in until they meet kind of as a smooth arc across the corner. Okay. I'll come up. Oops. Sorry about that. I'm still in Photoshop mode. I held down space bar. Sorry. And he points on all. There we go. Let me move this one over. There we go. Take this point like that. And we'll take this point like that. OK, so if I start to look at this, this is starting to feel a little bit more like a, a cushion or a pillow. It's a little more organic. Not every side is exactly the same. Okay, that's the nature of fabric. It's never identical. I didn't type in a value when I moved uh, the control points. I just kind of nudged it. So let me turn all those points back on again. And now I want to adjust the sides a bit. I keep, I, I'm, my brain is still in Photoshop. I didn't move on from this morning. I'm sorry. OK, so now let me go ahead and start to adjust the sides just a bit. And I'm just going to pull these sides just a little bit. Maybe I'll pull this one out just a little bit to create a little bit of a wave on that side. Right? Let's do the same thing here. Let's bulge a little bit there. And again, one of the things that helps a lot is to not have the people working on the roof. But you want to think about what does a cushion naturally look like? Where does it poof, push out? Where does it, where does it uh, get a little bit smaller as you start to make these adjustments? So let's say that I've made those adjustments. And as I look at this, this uh, curve, that starts to feel a whole lot more organic in shape than a rectangle. True? Okay. So now let's take this a step further. Let me take these points, turn the points on. And I'm going to look at these in the perspective view a little bit. And I'm going to select a few points around the side. Not all of them, just a few. And then in one of the front views, I'm going to move those points up just a little bit. Maybe like that. And you see that now this curve goes up and down a little bit, too. Okay, So it was flat in the same plane. Now it has a little bit of an undulation to it. OK, so that's a good start. What I can do with these is I can create a surface with these curves. Now notice I was very careful with how I set it up. So I have four separate curves. Two curves are going predominantly in this direction. Two curves are going predominantly in that direction. And they meet at the same points on the corners. OK, so I'm very specific with that. With that selected, I can select all four, and I can go up to the Surface Curve Network command. This is one of the weird, the, the type command for this is Network Surface, Network SRF, as opposed to Curve Network. So they don't match, but it is there. If I did it correctly, I'll get A, B, C, and D on my sides. And I can leave these as the default and say OK. And this will then build me a surface that undulates and is far more organic in shape than we had before. Okay? I'm going to back up for a second. I'm not going to create the curve, or the surface just yet. But I am going to take this, all four curves, and I'm going to copy these four curves vertically, four inches. So I have an upper set of curves. Okay. Now, it would be very rare for the upper set of curves to be exactly the same as the lower set of curves in a cushion. Again, organic shape, so we're going we're gonna to denature it just a little bit. So let me go ahead and turn those edit points back on. And we'll pick a few different points this time. And we will move those vertically 
maybe down a little bit. So it's a little different than it was before, right? The top surface is a little bit different. Furthermore, I could adjust a few of these in the upper and maybe have them bulge out a little bit more. Maybe this one pulls in a little bit more. Right, you get the idea. And maybe I did a little bit too much there, but it'll still be a good uh, illustration. So as we look at this, the curves are similar, but they've had some adjustments made to them. Okay. So now I have a top set and a bottom set. Okay. What if I want to control how the sides come together? Okay. Let me create a line that goes from the end point there to the end point there. Right, so again, I'm defining these surfaces by these networks of curves. So, and then let's take this curve, let's rebuild it. Uh, and we don't need seven points, maybe we need three points. I'll say okay. Let me show the curves. All right, let's take those two, let's move them out a bit. About that way. See how that bulges out just a little bit? Okay. Let me do that for the other corners. Go to end and to end. End and end. End and end. And I'll select these and we'll rebuild all of them again. points on, take these. Sometimes it's helpful to work in, you know, I'm switching between the top view and the side view. That didn't work the way I wanted it to. Instead of dragging, I'm going to actually move it. Take these, move, push those out a little bit. Right. I could also do the opposite. Right. I've been pushing things out. Naturally, when you sit on a cushion and you put weight on it, typically the fabric bulges out at the sides, not in. But I could adjust it to have it bulge in if I wanted to. But think about what happens to a cushion when you sit on it. Okay. So one more move here. And we'll push these out just a little bit. And now I have those controls on each side. So at this point, right, I could take the side four right there. I could go up to curve, or excuse me, surface, curve network. Say OK. And that gives me that side curve. OK. I'm going to go ahead and do that with all four of the sides. Oh, I should point out that if we wanted to, I could add a fifth curve. We'll go from midpoint to midpoint. Come on, let me turn off intersection here. I want to make sure that I'm on. There's midpoint to midpoint. Let's rebuild this one. And let me turn on those points. And we're going to move those. Maybe out a little bit more so that it squishes down, right? Like that. And then I could take this curve, that curve, that curve, that curve, and that curve, and I could make a network surface out of. One of the things that's really important when you're doing this is that the curves have to go in opposite directions. So I have this curve and this curve run in this direction, and these three run perpendicular to those. Okay, So it's, it's critical that I set it up that way. So I have those three. We'll go up to my surface network surface or curve network. I'll say OK. And I've now made that part of it. All right, so we'll go back and we'll do this side. One, two, three, four. Once again, I'll go to surface curve network. Okay, And we'll do this last one here. And we'll go to surface, curve network, say OK, and there it is. 
Okay? So now I'm going to get back to this upper piece. And we had previously done a, um, a curved network, but I want to add a little bit more texture to it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new polyline that goes from the middle of the front to the middle of the back. I'm going to rebuild this. And we'll rebuild it with 7. I'm going to turn those points on. And I'm going to adjust these two to be down so that I have a depression in the center, like a butt. right? So that's where my butt is on the, on the, uh, the cushion here. Okay, So I've got that. That's good. Let's go ahead and make the curved network of the top. So we'll take this, this. This, this, and this. And we'll do a surface curve network. We'll say OK. And that then creates the top surface with the depression there in the center. Okay. We can do the same thing at the bottom. I'm not going to add the extra curve because it just goes down below. And we're going to do surface curve network. And we'll say OK. And there's the bottom of my cushion. So this is a long way from that basic rectangle. right? So we've, we've managed to get this to feel a lot more organic in shape. We've thought a little bit about what the depressions would look like, where they would occur on this kind of a cushion. Now it's time to do some texture mapping on this object. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my materials. And we're going to load a material. And I'm going to want some kind of a fabric of some kind. And so you know, we, could, we could go through a variety of different fabrics. Uh, I'm going to pick something rather outrageous just so that we can see it. There it is. We did a preview of it. There it is. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to apply the material to the layer. Everything so far has been on the default layer. And let me close this. For clarity, I'm going to get rid of these extra layers. And let me go ahead and um, add an infinite plane. And then we'll do a render and see what it looks like. Oops. Remember, the infinite plane needs to be on a different layer. Change object layer. <laughs> and they're bowling above us. All right, let's try that one again. All right, so we now see that I have the cushion. The, the top has been applied OK, but the sides look a little funny. Okay, So let's go ahead and view this in rendered mode so we can kind of get a better sense of what's going on. And one of the things about this is we could use a box mapping on all of it um, to apply, which would probably be reasonably close. One of the things that's important, though, is that generally speaking, with fabric objects, there are seams in the fabric. There always are. So it's reasonable to have some seams in it. So let's go ahead and texture map this, though. And we'll apply a box map to it. And hold on a second. I hit the wrong button. Bounding box, world. It is capped. Right. Let's take. And make sure x equals y equals z, so the fabric looks like the same. And there it is. And it's reasonably close. Okay. 
but there's going to be some, some duplicates. The other thing is maybe the pattern or the, the, the texture is a little bit too dense. Maybe we need to repeat it a little bit more, maybe at 1.5 here. Something like that. Oops, looks like I didn't quite get it all. Yeah, all right. So having those seams is OK. Sometimes we might want to hide the seams a little bit, though. So there's a strategy for how to do that. Let me switch this back into shaded mode for a second. And I'm going to create a circle at the corner here uh, with a diameter of 0.25 inches. And then I'm going to rotate it so that it's in the third dimension. So let me rotate 3D. And it's going to help if I look at this from the top when I do this. I'm going to go out to one side like that. Oops. All right. See that little circle there? Okay. I'm going to then use that circle as a sweep. So I'll take this circle, and before I do it, hopefully I'll be able to do it all in one shot here. Let me take all the curves that go around the top edge. Like that. Let me go ahead and join them. And then let me go to a sweep one rail. There's my cross section curve. There's my seam. There's a little bit of an overlap there. But for the most part, it flows all the way around my object very nicely. I'll have to make a correction at that seam. But if we were to look at this and do a little render, it would be a little piping that goes around the outside edge. Okay? And maybe I don't like this material. Maybe we'll, we'll change the material. Let me go ahead and load material. Let me pick something a little bit less dramatic here. Let's go. Find material to layer. And we can try that rendering again. And this might be a little easier to see the piping that goes around the edge. Obviously, some couches and cushions have that kind of piping. Some of them have just the seam and the fabric where the fabric's stitched together. Uh, either way is, is perfectly fine. I'm just trying to show you the strategy for how you would create something uh, along these lines. So there we go. You can kind of see it as it's coming through. Looks kind of like a cushion, right? which is certainly the idea. Okay. So this is one strategy for creating uh, this sort of a shape. I'm going to show you a couple other strategies uh, as well. And again, it's going to all be with these control curves. So let's go ahead and let's start again. I'm going to start with a box. We're going to do this one at 18. Let's do it at 16 inches, 16 inches. Oops. At 16 inches, comma, 16 inches. There we go. Again, I'm going to explode that. Then I will rebuild There's some more pieces. Okay, Let me show those. And I'm going to first start with the corners. Um, let me look at it in the top view here. Round these over. I'm not rounding them quite as much this time. I still have them coming to a slight point. Like that. Pull that out slightly. Pull that out slightly. OK, 
OK, so I have that cushion. Okay? But this time, I'm going to build the cross curves a little bit differently. Okay? So let me turn, let me go back into the perspective view here. Okay? This time, I'm going to go diagonally. So I'm going to go across this way, like that. Come on. Enter. And then I'm going to rebuild this curve. And then I'll show these. And I'm going to move all the points up a bit. And this will make more sense when I do it in the side view here. I'll move all the points up. Then I'm going to deselect these outer two, move the next set up a little bit more, deselect there and there, and move this set up a little bit more like that. So now you can see that that's a very different shape that I'm starting. This one's more of a rectangle. This one's going to be more of like a throw pillow. Okay? So let me take this curve. And I'll go ahead and for, for ease of manufacture, I'm just going to mirror this. And I'm going to need to do it that way. Let me take all of these curves. Sorry, I'm just going to move this out of the way so that hopefully we can see it a little bit better. There we go. All right, let me turn off the infinite plane a little bit so we can see it. So there is the start of this particular pillow. Okay. So I have an option. I can choose to do this as, as a couple different pieces. But what I'll do is I'll do one more curve that's going to go the opposite direction here. And I'm going to make sure that I hit the midpoint of this line and hit the midpoint of that line. Okay. Then I'll take this, and I'm going to do the same rebuild. And I'll say OK. I'll show my points. And then we need to make a few adjustments. We'll adjust these guys. Vertical. Like that. Move these up a little bit. Move vertical like this. Now one of the challenges here is you see how these two don't match up anymore? I need to make sure that they match up. So I need to make sure that these two points are exactly in the same place. So let me move from, make sure point is on. From point to point, not quite. So that they intersect in space. Okay. So now that I have those established, I need to make sure that my curves are going in the same direction. So this one's a little complicated, right? Because I have a curve there, I have a curve here, I have one curve that goes over there, I have one curve that goes that way. So let's think of it as this plus this, if I were to join them together. Likewise, this plus this, if I were to join them. That's one direction, that's the same direction, and this curve on the top is that same direction. Then this curve is going the opposite direction. So now I can go in and go to curve, excuse me, surface curve network. This pops up, and I can build that part of the cushion. Okay? So let me go ahead and do the underside here. We'll take this, oops, take that curve, this one, and this one, and we'll go to surface curve network. So I didn't draw the curve that went the opposite way. So let me take this curve, let me mirror it. I have to make sure that those two match up correctly. So let me turn the points on for both of those. 
And let me make sure that this matches up with that. By the way, uh, one quick thing. There are two different types of control point curves. One has the edit points, which are actually points on the line. The other is control points, which have to do with it. Generally, it's easier to create a smoother curve with the control points, which is what I've been doing. Uh, but since I want those two points to line up perfectly, sometimes it's easier to use this edit points uh, button because then you'll see the actual uh, points on the line. And you can make sure that those two match up correctly. Let me smooth this out a little bit more. Yeah, about like that. And then we'll go ahead and create the bottom half. Oh, come on. My mouse is so not working today. All right, so there they are. Curve network. And I'll say OK. And that then gives us this pillow. Okay? And if I were to apply a material to this, we could, we could do the same sort of thing. Uh, it's on the default layer. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Turn that back on. Move vertical. Let's pull this up a little bit more. Cut my mouse. It's just awful. There we go. And we can zoom in on that one. Give it a quick render. And we have a little bit different style render here, or different style cushion there. Okay. You might even decide that the center of this really needs like a little, um, like an ellipsoid. There's a little button here. Let me do this in the top view. Hold on a second. So there's your little button that goes on the top of it, like that. You guys get the idea. Okay. Now, in reality, before I made this, I really should have uh, dimpled right there. So the curve should really come down just a little bit so that that goes on. But you guys get the idea, right, that you can keep adding these sorts of things. Okay. So all that's great. We've done a couple cushions. Um, for what you, I'm asking you to do today, you know, do something like a cushion or a pillow or whatever, but I want to show you a few other things. So as I move away from here, I'm going to start to get into the, the little bit more out there, but it, now's a good time to show you how you would go about doing it. But let's say that I wanted to create like curtains. Okay, so let's start with a uh, basic polyline, and I'm going to do a straight set of hanging curtains first. Okay. So let's do, let me turn on ortho, and let's say we're going to do three feet of curtains. No, let's do a little more. Let's do uh, four feet of curtains. There we go. Now I'm going to take this curve, and again, I'm doing all of this with the curve tool, and I'm going to rebuild it by the number of folds that I want in my curtains. Okay, so let's say that I want. Um, I don't know, let's do 12. And let me turn on my points. There are my 12. Let me look at this in the top view, right there. And I'm going to leave the first point in the same place. And then I'm going to select every other curve here as we go across. 
Okay, and we're going to leave the last one in the same place. And then I'll move these over. Oops, you know what? In this case, I want to turn on the edit points instead. All right, so let's start there, there, there. I'm holding down Shift while I'm doing this. And there. I'm going to move these ones in this direction. And I could specify a value, but we're going to just wing it a little bit. And then I'll select the opposite points. And again, I'm leaving this in the same place. So the, the beginning and the end are at the same place. And we'll pull this one back, maybe more like that. So I've essentially I've created the first line of this curtain. Okay. Then let me go ahead and take this curtain. I'm going to copy it. And it's going to be vertical. And we'll go up maybe, oops, I should have done the copy here. V for vertical. And we'll go up, I don't know, let's say um, 7 feet. Oh, there we go. OK, so if I took these two, right? remember, I need that third and fourth line. So I could go from that point to this point. And I could go from this point to this point and select all of these and do the surface curve network and say OK. And I'd end up with the little curtain. Okay. Now, unfortunately, this is starting to look very plain. right? There's not much to it just yet. So let's, let's start to make a few adjustments to this. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of this for right now. And I'm going to take the bottom curtain here, and I'm going to copy this to the midpoint. So go up to the midpoint like that. Then I'm going to do a scale 1D. So I'm scaling in one dimension. This mm, will go down to about there or so. I'll take this one, and I'll scale oops, 1D. And we'll let this one go to about there. Instead of this curve, I'm going to go from right there to right there to right there. I'll then rebuild this curve. So this is, again, same strategies that I've been using. We'll say maybe 7. Say OK. I'm going to turn my edit points on. And I have to make sure that this point here aligns with that point there. And then let's pull this one out a little bit more like that. Pull this one. Out a little bit more like that. Let's pull this one. More like that. And then we're there. So now, if I take these and I go to my surface curve network, I say OK. Instead of having the generic curtain, I've pulled it back in the center. So this would be as if there was a tie in the center. Do you guys see how that works? OK. Obviously, I'd have to make the tie and, and do more to it. But it's, it's responding to the pullback there. OK. If I didn't like it, I could squish it a little bit more and keep this adjustment uh, going. Furthermore, I could vary this a little bit. If I turn the edit points back on, I could adjust these points slightly on an individual basis. You know, Maybe this one sticks out just a little bit more. Maybe this one sticks back just a little bit more. Just to, to vary it a little bit so it's not quite so fixed. You know, maybe this one doesn't need as much. Something like that. And now with the curved network, We'd have it a little bit more like that. Okay, see how the bottom then flares out a little bit? That's a little bit more realistic because the bottoms aren't always as even as the tops. Okay, so now let's take this a step further and say, ah, you know what? I really wish that I had like a curtain uh, rod or something that went through this um, this setup here. So, and I should have. I mean, before I do that, let me take. Need to make one adjustment to the ends here. 
Let me turn those edit points on. And let me look at it in the top view. And I want to take all of these, and I need them to go a little bit further over that way. I need these to go over a little bit further that way. That way. Sorry, just a few little adjustments here. All right. So let me go ahead and I'm going to look at this in the side view, or excuse me, in the front view right here, right up at the top. And I'm going to, so that I can see this a little better, I'll look at it in shaded view. Oh, I haven't made the surface yet. Mm. Whoops. Let me take these and make the surface. Go to Surface, Curve Network. There it is. Now I can see it. Then I'll take a circle in the side view, uh, and with a diameter of, uh, I don't know, what's a, what's a curtain rod? We'll do it maybe one inch. Oops. Diameter of one inch. There it is. Let me move this so that it goes right up here at my curtain. Okay. Now you guys remember way back when we used the project command? Oops, looks like I have multiples. They're just floating on me. There we go. I used the project command. So let me type project through this surface. I now have all the little holes that go through the curtain. I can then do a trim. Okay. And now if we were looking at it, there's the holes at the top. Okay, so let me take a and actually put the curtain rod in. So let's probably use a cylinder here. Turn on center snap. Oh, come on. Give me the center. All right, I'll do it this way. Center snap. Uh, let's do 0.75 inches. We'll make an adjustment to it later. Let's move this so that it's right up at the top because the curtain rod would be you know, hanging at the top. And then let me move it in space so that it intersects I like that. Let me scale 1D from there to there, make it a little bit longer. And so now I have the curtain with the little curtain rod that goes to the top. You guys kind of see how all that can come together? Obviously, this is a level of detail that I'm not quite expecting you to have just yet. Though I will say, when I looked at your work from last class, you were far more advanced than any class I've had before. Like, you picked it up a lot faster. So that's good. That gives me hope that I can dump new stuff on you, OK? So anyway, uh, if we were to go ahead and render this out, let me go into my options here, if my mouse will work. There we go. I'm going to change my environment so that the background is white. I'll say OK. And let's tip this down a little bit. And let's go ahead and render. And once it's done, you can get a sense for what the curtain looks like. So another, another option to take this a step further would be to try to mimic what the wind, if the wind were blowing it, right? That just takes a shift in the bottom curve, pulling it up and having it arc, uh, and then running it that way. Again, it's a lot about the observation more than anything else. So you have to think about what does it actually look like and then mimic what it looks like. So if you had a picture to go from, that might help so that you can really see what would, what would happen. 
Um, so anyway, you guys don't have to sit and watch me do that, that part of it as well. But I just want to show you this variety of examples. This strategy would work fine as a tablecloth. right? If we wanted to do a tablecloth, we could do the same thing, where we had the table, and then at the bottom we had the little folds, so the pleats would be there. Same sort of strategy. Okay. So I know it's a lot to take in. Start with the most basic cushion strategy, uh, and then work your way forward and see if you can create something a little bit more organic in shape. Again, the reason that I'm kind of emphasizing this is obviously you're going to be moving towards your assignment 201. Chances are, in a table and a chair, you may have some kind of a cushion type item. So it's worth trying to, to kind of learn that strategy. All right? Are there any questions? No? All right. <clears throat> 